So hi guys, my name is Mansi Anand and I welcome you to this series called RBI 24/7. So as most of you would be knowing that in this series we try to discuss some concepts that are related to economy and finance current affairs, right? So guys, before you start with the session, it's it would be better if you will know something about your mentor. So I have done my post graduation from Delhi School of Economics and I have cleared JRF in commerce as well as management. So guys uh, many a times people say that there are there is no use of uh, having such uh, um, having clear jrf uh, in multiple subjects but this is not true uh, because the more you study the more you get to learn about different things and the more your concepts get clear right so now starting with this note i ask you guys to subscribe to our channel all those of you who are new here don't forget to press this uh, subscribe button it can help you to stay in touch with us and don't forget to press this bell icon which is flashing on the screen it can help you to stay updated regarding all notification that comes up that come up and after that you can also join our telegram group on this group you can post all your doubts and queries and we'll try to get back to you as soon as possible right and since we are talking about doubts i hope all of you uh, who all are mentioning your doubts in the comment sections uh, your uh, you are getting your answers and guys if you still have any doubt you can always comment in the video and please try to do it on the latest video it is easier to track right and now moving ahead to first question for today i hope the screen is perfectly visible so this question says SEBI on 21st September prescribed an alternative risk management framework which is ARMF for cases of near zero and negative prices for any underlying commodities and futures. So it says near zero or negative, negative prices. So does it ring a bell in your mind? Which commodity is being talked about here? Some we, we had uh, a case of negative prices this year only. So according to this, Select the option which will trigger the need for ARMF. So according to the circular by SEBI, you have to tell which of the following condition is going to trigger the need for this new framework. Moving ahead to the solution for this question. And the solution is B. B means if there is a fall in the commodity prices by more than 50% within 20 trading days, then it is going to trigger the need for ARMF, which is the Alternative Risk Management Framework. Guys, uh, this might be uh, looking a little bit tricky to you, but let's break it down. First of all, it talks about commodities which have or which face negative prices on stock exchange. So, those of you who remember that which uh, product I was talking about, I was talking about the oil prices. So if you remember, in April, the oil prices, they went totally crazy and they went negative, right? So uh, negative means usually what happens is whenever you go to a, a store, let's say you want to buy a chocolate, you pay the seller. Right. But in case of negative prices, the buyer is not paying to the seller, but the reverse transaction is happening and the seller is paying to the buyer. Right. So this is the transaction which is taking place. The seller in itself is paying to the buyer because and uh, okay. Now you must be thinking that why is this happening? Why would a seller? So, um, Let's say you go to your nearby store to buy a chocolate. Uh, it would be so great if the shopkeeper pays you to buy a chocolate, right? You're getting the chocolate and you're getting the money. But this can happen only, where, only in a situation where that seller has to incur some expenses on storage of that chocolate. And those expenses are greater than what, what the seller is willing to pay you right so this takes us to the oil situation 
Why did oil prices become negative? Because there was low demand for oil because of the COVID induced lockdown. And that is why the producers were having the problem of storing it. That is why this the storage problem, the lack of storage space, this created so many problems and they just wanted to get rid of this commodity anyhow. So they were even willing to pay the buyers to take or to purchase the oil, right? So we are here talking about the oil futures. So guys, if you want to know about this in detail, we have discussed this in much detail. You can watch that session. You can ask for its link in the comments. Uh, if you're not clear with this example, then you're going to face difficulty in this question. So I would suggest you that first you watch the story behind this negative prices of oil and then you come back to this question, right? Now, what Sebi is saying is that Sebi is saying if it can happen once, it can happen again. And in case of any commodities price going in the negative arena, there are huge losses to the market. So in that case, we want to prevent such a situation. And that is why we are creating a new mechanism or a system that would uh, overlook the prices and prevent them from going into the negative zone. And that new framework is called alternative risk management framework. I hope we are clear till now, right? So before learning about this option, these options, let's just move ahead to the solution, right? So SEBI constituted a task force of clearing corporations, major players in the market, and after that other market participants. So such framework obviously requires coordination of all the major players in the market. Now, market regulators, that is SEBI, SEBI said that, that, okay, we are going to define some characteristics which would help us to identify that uh, prices for which commodity are going to go in negative. As you can see here, that they are saying that commodities that need specialized storage space. So, coming back to oil, commodity that needs some specialized storage space that is one commodity that uh, that has the chances of anyhow going into the negative zone when the storage space is not available properly right in physical markets and these commodities if they are not stored properly they might cause cause some environmental hazards or have any other external implication or commodities that cannot be disposed of or destroyed with ease so something like chemical waste it is very important to dispose them properly otherwise they could cause serious deterioration and it may cause an environmental hazard or may incur significant cost will be in principle treated as as a doubtful commodity to the possibility of near zero and negative prices so they are just saying that all the commodities that needs specialized storage space and it is difficult to dispose them of that is why care has to be taken there in that all those commodities we are going to put them into a category which will say that okay they are prone or they are more vulnerable to a negative price situation right so moving ahead okay here you can see uh, they are saying that a uh, the need for arm armf shall be triggered on some indicators and there are uh, here are five indicators mentioned so need means that whenever one of these five situation happens then that clearing corporation or stock exchange whoever is taking care has to move to this new framework in order to prevent the situation of negative prices right so what are these conditions first of all if there is a commodity and it price falls by more than 50 percent within 20 days 20 trading days while comparing the intraday and highest and lowest prices so they are saying that they are going to compare the highest and lowest prices of in of one day and if a commodity within a span of 20 days if it falls more than if its price falls then more the, uh, if its price falls more than 50 percent then that is going to trigger the need to armf so see here they have not specified much that what is going to be uh, uh, what are going to be the steps under this new framework what the clearing corporation or stock exchanges have to do they have left 
uh, the the steps to these organizations only but the regulator is saying that, saying that you have to take some steps or you have to do something in all these five situations right after that the next situation says that if the commodity is internationally referenced contracts the international exchange or clearing corporation having the benchmark uh, contract decides to introduce such measures for negative prices so if it is a contract of international nature or referenced by it then the that particular agency or that particular organization looking after it international exchange or clearing corporation will have to do something they will have to decide on some steps after that options contract having strike price values of near zero negative are introduced by the stock exchange for trading so now they are saying if there is a stock exchange which comes up with a new commodity for tra trading or they introduce options contract i hope we all know the meaning of options contract if not we have detailed uh, we have discussed the meaning of options contract in much detail in the derivatives video you can ask for its link right and okay we were saying that uh, we were talking about that if an, if a stock exchange comes up with a new financial product or options contract which have uh, the price of the commodity near zero then also there is a need to uh, implement this particular mechanism after that price of underlying commodity or futures contract come down to a level or equal to or lower than the maximum price movements observed over the mpor margin period of risk in past 12 months right so if uh, if the the price of the commodity is coming down to a level which is more than the maximum price movement which has taken place in past 12 months then also this mechanism is triggered and any other condition which the clearing corporation thinks or the stock exchange think that the that there can be a possibility in future this commodity's price can go into some negative zone then also they have to full they have to implement this mechanism or take some steps according to it right so i hope you are clear with this question and moving ahead to the second question for today okay seems like a very simple question how many states approval is needed by the gst council to pass the resolution so very simple question moving ahead to the solution for this question and the solution says d that is 20 states approval is required by gst council to pass resolution so you must be getting that if you have see if you have been reading newspapers regularly you must be knowing that here we are talking about the gst shortfall case and the tussle going on between the center government and the states state governments the problem of how to fulfill this gst shortfall which is faced by the states right okay so see this gst council this is seen as a symbol of federal polity so federal polity federalism so it has the meaning federalism so i hope you remember what is the meaning of federalism uh, we discussed in one session the meaning of federalism and uh, different types of federalism like competitive and cooperative marble cake and layered cake so i hope you remember those analogies um, so federalism in short it is a structure where there is a division of power between different hierarchies of authorities or governing bodies like governments as you can see here classically defined as a system of government where there is distribution of power although there are many independent states having some authority of their own but they are governed by uh, an umbrella organization which is hierarchically superior to them in that case the system is known as federalism right so distribution of power governed by a constitution two elements centralized authority and the constituent units are independent and independently so on right so this gst council is based on a principle on the principle of 
federalism where where all the state states irrespective of the political parties they are governed by they come together and they brainstorm regarding different issues right and this becomes more important in the scenario of this covid-19 pandemic so uh, recently there have been many articles in newspapers that do we need cooperative federalism or we need competitive federalism so it's it's based so the main principle comes out to federalism right moving ahead to third question here is your third question for today which says identify the body being talked about here so the first statement it tells you that it is a self governing autonomous body of officials and distinguished professionals for public sector banks so okay we know that the body is somehow related to public sector banks and it was part of the indra dhanush mission of government aimed at revamping the psbs so part of indra dhanush mission and obviously you know that they are connected with the governance of public sector banks you have to select the correct option out of these five moving ahead to the solution and the solution says that the correct option is option a which is bank board bureau so bank board bureau it has recently been in news so there has uh, there, there is a new research paper which has come out and it is written by former governor raguram rajan and former deputy governor viral acharya so they both have made a paper on indian banking system and the reforms they need so guys it is a very talked about paper it has recently released but still it is making news and if you want to read that paper it is available on mr rajan's a uh, linkedin account you can it's it's about a 35 page research paper you can if you are interested you can give it a read right so this paper it talks about the problems of the indian banking sector especially the public sector banks and the need to reform them and the reforms that should be taken right so one thing that this paper talks about is the failure to give power to bank board bureau so this bank board bureau it it uh, it was established with the major aim to correct the incentive structure of public sector bank which was a little bit toppled up so if any one of you has read the book called i do what i do by dr rajan in this book he talks about that how government has much influence in deciding the top management or top personnel of public sector banks so basically government has the power over public sector banks and it can make psbs do different activity uh, undertake different activities or do different jobs as per its convenience and also they have a good say or a gray or you can say a significant say in deciding that who is going to lead these public sector banks so uh, this this gives way to uh, this gives way to inefficiency here right so for this purpose bo a bank board bureau was brought into the scene that okay it can overlook that who is going to be in the top management so that public sector banks see we always here that how private sector is more efficient than the public sector because public sector it is usually uh, uh, it it has many problems like red tapism right but they wanted to remove all these problems or inefficiencies of public sector banks because in a country like india we place a huge trust on public sector and public sector banks that is why today uh, I, i think in today's time also we prefer to open our accounts in public sector banks rather than a private sector banks so you must have heard people in your uh, uh, in your circle or the older people saying that uh, sarkari sector is very important kya sarkari bank mein account khulwana chahiye private bank to kabhi bhi band ho jate hain aate jate rehte hain right so although we are not making a statement here this is something that we uh, that we casually hear right so bank board bureau headquartered at central office of rbi mumbai started functioning on april 1 2016 it is an advisory authority who has the main job of providing advice 
uh, and it comprises of eminent professionals and officials to improve the management of public sector banks as I just told you and PGNIR committee to review governance of boards of banks in India mentioned the need for bank board bureaus right so this is what uh, this is one thing that has been talked about in Rajan's and Acharya's paper that uh, our government has significantly failed at implementing the recommendations of the Nayak committee as well as providing power to bank board bureau it is very important to correct this this incentive structure because see uh, the top management in a public sector in a private bank has all the incentive because that's a money making entity and their uh, their incentives are linked to the profits their banks made so though they have the incentive for efficiency whereas this is not the case in a public sector bank right so we need to correct the problems of inefficiency or uh, the problems with the incentive structure of public sector banks so i think i must have told you about rajan's paper uh, that he present in which he told about uh, the global financial crisis the, the I think most talked about paper of Dr. Rajan in that paper also he mentioned uh, about this wrongful incentive structure of public sector banks top management right okay so apart from recommending personnel for PSBs bureau has also been assigned with the task of recommending personnel for appointment as directors in government owned insurance companies because obviously they are also a systematic player. It is tasked with improving corporate governance at public sector banks, building capacities, etc. So improving the governance of public sector banks is the main job of Bank Board Bureau. Moving ahead. So guys, here is your fourth question, which says select the correct statement about some of the parts valuation. I hope the screen is perfectly visible and you can see all the options. So you can pause the video here and have a look at these options and then decide which is your answer. Moving ahead to the solution for this question and the solution is C. So C means some of the parts valuation is the process of determining what the individual divisions of a company would be worth if they were spun off or bought by a different company. So guys, it is nothing but SOTP or sum of the parts valuation. As the name tells you that it is sum of the parts, that if there are many parts in an entity or in an organization, you just have to add them or you just have to take out a total of them in order to know the value of the enterprise. So same, this is a measuring tool or ma this is a measure which tells you about the value of an entity, value of a company. So here we are talking about conglomerates which work into different, different sectors. So like Tata, you can see it has presence in almost every field. So it is in automobiles, steel, after that it, it has presence in making salt so it, it works on different different things right so and it is very difficult to analyze the value the combined value of tata since it works into many different sectors that is why we are saying that it's a better it's a better method to find out the value of each section and then just add them right and then we can find out the total value of Tata. So this is what SOTP talks about. SOTP, uh, it was recently mentioned in an article in connection to Reliance, just as Tata Reliance, we all know. Reliance, I think, is the most talked about company, Indian company this year, which has garnered so many investments in, in such uncertain times, right? So it's ventures, geo, its ventures such as Geo are, I think, talk of the town and many like uh, huge globe, uh, global firms, they want to invest in that because probably they are seeing some potential in Geo, which they are not looking in other companies, right? So, okay. So, SOTP is often put to use when a company is a conglomerate, has different business unit in different industries. Just talked about this. 
some of the parts valuation also known as a breakup analysis because we break down the value into different segments helps a company understand its true value for example you might hear that a young technology company is worth more than the sum of its parts so see if the markets are saying that the company has more value than the sum of its part it means that these companies might these companies which are working under one umbrella they might do better if they were not under this umbrella or they were acquired by some other company who works in the same sector let's say if there is tata and it wants to sell one of its automobile unit and it is bought by one of the top car manufacturers of the world so they might be able to handle it better than tata because they have all the they have all the knowledge and expertise and probably they can up, they can have the benefits of economies of scale right so this is just an example it might be possible that the company the conglomerate is managing its unit much better than that would have been managed by a, an industry specific unit right so they are saying that if it is being said that a company has value more than its sum of parts that means it has growth potential and they might do better as individual units right so meaning the value of companies divisions could be worth more than that they were if they were sold to other companies right after that in situation as this one larger companies just as i told you they have they know how to take the advantage of synergies and economies of scale unavailable to smaller companies so see here to we took the example of tata which in itself is like a huge company but this can also be applied in case of small companies who are working into different sector they might be better off selling their units to some larger companies who can handle them better and maximize the division's profit and unlock the unrealized value right so this is just uh, these are just some uh, facts about the sotp or some of the parts valuation moving ahead to the last question for today okay before moving ahead here you can see a diagram telling you about the different sectors which can be present in a conglomerate and how sotp is calculating by totaling the value of all the sectors involved here you can see automobile e-commerce bank software oil and gas right okay moving ahead to the last question here is your last question for today which says a dash is an additional debt that can include any additional mortgage or loan beyond a borrower's first mortgage which is secured with the same collateral so guys this question talks about some sort of debt some sort of additional debt let's see who gives the correct answer the correct option for this question is option b which means the correct option is a piggy back mortgage this is also called a piggy back loan so this was asked by one of you i hope the viewer who asked about this um gets his or her doubts clear right so here we are going to talk about piggy back loan so it's very simple let's say you want to buy a house right and this house is valued at 1 crore right so you go to a you are thinking that okay i have good i get good salary and i might be able to pull off the emis then let's go and buy this house now you go to the bank and tell them that i need some loan you have rupees 10 lakh in your bank account and you need to arrange the rest 90 lakhs right you go to the bank and tell them that i need a loan of 90 lakh a home loan and the value of house is 1 crore now the bank tells you that uh, we are sorry that we cannot give you that loan and why is this so because you need to make a 20% down payment on your own that means if you are buying a house worth 1 crore you at least need to pay 20 lakh by your own self and the maximum loan that we can give to you is 
एटी लैक राइट नाउ वॉट डू वी डू नाउ हेयर इज वेन द पिगी बैक मॉडगेज और पिगी बैक लोन कम्स इन टू दीन सी दिस पिगी बैक मॉडगेज इज एन अडिशनल लोन विच हेल्प सच बोरवर हु आर अनेबल टू अरेन्ज फॉर डाउन पेमेंट टू अरेन्ज फॉर दैट मनी सो दैट दे कैन फुलफिल द रेस्ट ऑफ द डाउन पेमेंट राइट so the bank manager advises you that sir you sir or ma'am you can take a piggy bank loan of additional 10 lakh and then you will have 20 lakh as your uh, uh, 20 lakh to make your down payment and then you can take the loan for 80 lakhs right so i hope you get uh, now you get it what is piggy bank mortgage okay so serve service so it can serve several purposes so basically a piggy bank loan is an additional loan usually it is taken for fulfilling the down payment but it can serve other purposes too uh, uh, most of the most of these mortgage helps borrower with the down payment so these loans they have usually higher interest rate than on conventional mortgages right because see, you see there is an additional there is an additional risk and they are not asking for any more collateral um, generally what happens is the basic loan that you took for 80 lakh and the piggy bank loan that you took for 10 lakh they come in a combo offer so sometimes they are also called the combo loan right so whatever collateral you are providing for your basic loan so in our example that was the house that you were buying on the on the basis of this collateral only the bank provides you with a piggy bank loan so no uh, no new collateral is required that is why the interest rates are often higher right also called combo loans as i just told you made up of two loans first mortgage mortgage based on 80% so that is just a social just, that is just a norm can vary of the purchase price and home equity line of credit that is piggy backed on the top of the first mortgage which is about um that depends how much money you have so in our example you needed to arrange 10% more right so one thing a piggy back mortgage can also be used for uh for avoiding to pay for private mortgage insurance so one option that we talked about was to take a piggy bank loan for to arrange for down payments now an alternative option is to request the bank to give you the loan with lesser amount of collateral you tell the bank that i only have 10 lakh please give me the loan for 90 lakh now bank is saying okay let me think i think i can give you this loan but you will have to take an insurance because they are providing you a loan with lesser collateral lesser down payment that is why you will have to take an insurance known as pm i as you can see here private mortgage insurance that if you're not able to pay your debts back then we have insurers to support us so now you see you have to spend on the loan paying back the loan and on and also on this insurance part right so this is an alternative to piggy bank loan now many people who don't want to pay this insurance they might want to go for piggy bank loan so these are alternatives right so guys here we talked about piggy bank mortgage so i am leaving you with one question that what is under water mortgage so do try to learn about it and give it a read and do mention it in the comments and if you have a doubt regarding this you can always mention it in the, on the videos and we'll take it take it up in the upcoming session so here is a here is little food for thought uh, learn about what is under water mortgage and i'll wait for your answers in the comments so guys these were the five questions for today and i hope you learned something new from this video if you did then don't forget to give us a thumbs up i'll be back tomorrow with some new set of information and till then take care of your health keep your studies going on and thank you for being here